Hey everybody, Leah Klett here with The Christian Post, and my guest today is actor Cuba Gooding Jr. He stars in the brand new faith-based film, The Firing Squad. This story is one of hope and redemption. It's about three prisoners facing execution who brought their entire prison camp to Christ. Well, Cuba, thank you so much for taking some time to speak with me about this really important movie. I had no yeah. idea about this story. Yeah. The Firing Squad, it's a true story of redemption, turning mm -hmm. drug dealers into devout Christians. Tell us about this movie and what drew you to the story. <clears throat> well, like any project you get, it's always you have to, something has to spark with you with the script. You know, in the, after living through the pandemic and, and, and all the wars that we're going through, it's like, it's time to get back to God. You know, and I got this script sent to me from Tim. And it hit me so powerfully that these men had nothing to live for, but found faith in the darkest times in their life in a jail cell and and were able to face the inevitable with dignity pride and knew that it wasn't the end and 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 I'm telling you I read that and I wept and I read it again and I called Tim and it was funny because Tim and I had done another movie called Freedom years ago and he said um he said this time this story based on these these men that were in this extraordinary situation this time we're going to reach an audience because it's something about their strength and their dignity in the darkest time is what we need right now. We need not only in the United States, but we need it all over the world where people you know, are dealing with in the Middle East and, and mass shootings and all of this. People are we're just getting away from faith. And, and, and I was like, I'm in. I'm all the way in. Yeah. So that's, that, that was my initial like, you know, moth to a flame moment with the script was realizing that two things. One, what I just said about the fact that the world needs stories of redemption and faith. It's a really crucial time. And the second thing, interestingly enough, a lot of films that you see today go to streaming websites, be it Netflix or Apple TV and, and whatnot. And the audience, the theater going audience has kind of stayed at home. First we were trained during the pandemic and now we're afraid to go back to the theater. But what is the audience that's never wavered? The congregation, right? They go to church every Sunday, rain, sleet, shine. And here we have a film like Sound of Freedom, like these other faith-based movies that are saying, here's your story in the theaters. And they're showing up, like we're having these screenings. And people are coming like crazy because, you know, that's the, the, the last real audience available to, to film going, to, to movies. And so those two things weighed on my head and I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm all in. So. What type of reaction are you seeing from people who watch this movie for the first time? I think stories of persecution and standing firm in the face of opposition, you can't leave these kinds of stories and be untouched. Right. Yeah, uh, it's funny because everybody sits quiet and they, they laugh when they laugh and, you know, they, they, they study the film halfway through. But when it comes to that third act, um, there's something that transforms the audience. Like you see them move emotionally, you can hear the weeping a little bit, but it's like when they leave that theater, it's almost, you know, I keep saying faith, but it's like, they, you, it seems like their faith is renewed. And they say it, they say it over and over again that, you know, it's such a simple thing. And yet it's something that people are connecting with in such a powerful way when they walk out of the theater. And I'm an old school guy, you know, I started in the business before, years before you were born. And it was like, when you went to the movie theater, if you didn't walk out of that theater with that lasting impression, you felt like you wasted two hours of your time. And it seems like this movie is making people really connect. It's, it's, it's almost like I haven't seen this reaction since The Passion of the Christ. And I think, again, if you're talking about the audience that are gravitating to these faith-based movies, 
I think it's it's that thing where people are getting that release, and I think that they're they're finding they're finding healing with, with the story that we're, we're trying to tell. Them. Well, Cuba, your own story is so interesting to me because you were a Christian as as a child, as a young teen, but then you've had a long career in Hollywood. You've been through so many ups and downs, and you recently rededicated your life to Christ. Tell yeah. me about this journey. You know, it's it's one thing that I've always prayed for in my life. I start off every morning and I go to bed every night with the same prayer of God, thine will be done. God's will be done in my life. Because a lot of times I've been in situations and scenarios that I know are dark. And I and I go, you know, I don't I don't know why I'm here and why I'm doing what I'm doing, but I know it's God's will. And every time I come out the other end, either stronger, it's almost like when when I take on People ask me what my favorite movies are. I always say the real life characters, my military films, Men of Honor, Pearl Harbor, Tuskegee Airmen, Red Tails, um, any movie that ha that I get to portray, Gifted Hands, where I, I play a real person, I get to connect with that person's journey in such a powerful way that it touches me and my soul and it changes me. Master Chief Carl Bashir, who I played in Men of Honor, is a part of me now. And I make decisions based on his example. But then there's also the darker side. I played O.J. Simpson in The People versus O.J. Simpson in there when I was in the back of that Bronco with a weapon in my mouth. That affected my soul as well. And I went through that journey for a couple of years. I was in a really dark place. I lost my father. And, um, and, and, and then God, literally I woke up and God said, all right, you ready to come back? <laughs> Remember me? So, and here I am. Yeah. So looking back over your career, because you played so many different characters and you're saying that you essentially, you had to absorb a part of them. Are there any characters that maybe you wish you hadn't taken on or is it all just part of your journey? You know, it's almost like a professional athlete, right? Do you wish you broke your arm? Do you wish you dislocated your hip? Did you wish you popped your Achilles? Yeah. But would you have still played as hard in that moment during that game? 100%. That's how I feel about it, about my life. I've got scars and bruises, physically, mentally. But would I played any differently during the game, though? Mm. I would have played. So what are you taking away from this movie internally? What piece of this martyr for Christianity are you continuing to carry with you? Yeah, it's like... Every day I have a prayer list and I pray for not just individuals, but groups of people. And I think what this movie did is it really reawakened that attention to society and how, you know, my journey can be a positive impact on a lot of people. And so I just stay open in the moment now. So the, the firing squad does have such a strong faith-based message. I know you believe so strongly in supporting these kinds of films, the church supporting these kinds of films. How will this film impact your future trajectory though? Are you going to take on more projects in the faith space or what does that look like? We already have some in development, yes ma'am. Okay. We have, we have three scripts that we're um, in active uh, um, pre-production on, so here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm excited. You can't tell me anything else? Uh, there's, 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 there's one that's more of a, uh, nonfiction tale, but there are two based on real life characters that, uh, that I, that I'm excited about. One specifically is, um, uh, um, uh, based on our, our police officers today. And, um, the, the story opens with, with our protagonist and we don't understand why we're watching this person going to line up and he's. He's got blood on his shirt and, and he's being booked and fingerprinted. And then you realize that that he shot a young black kid. So you have a black cop who shot a black kid and then it's unravels from there. And it's a powerful, another powerful story of redemption. So. Wow. What kind of response have you gotten from the industry to your sort of pivot to these more redemptive faith-based films? Have you gotten any backlash? 
I don't think, you know, it's so funny because I, I know that narrative. I know what you're getting at when you say Hollywood, us against them. But you can't deny the shift that is happening with faith-based movies. And no one in Hollywood is, first off, they're not the bravest people in Hollywood. They're not going to come and say, why are you doing this? They're going to say, let's see if it works. And then if it works, it's like, we know this is the right way to go. That's how Hollywood works. And so far right now, everybody, you know, it's, it's quiet, quiet as a church mouse right now. But um, it's because of the reactions that we're getting from the audiences all across the country, from uh, Hawaii to, to New York City. So, so we'll let the film speak for itself. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not an us versus them person when it comes to Hollywood. I, I know so many wonderful Christians in Hollywood, and I've seen so much redemptive content coming out of Hollywood. So yeah. I've been very encouraged by what I've seen over the last couple of years. Me too. And I'm telling you, the one, you know, you have your Marvel movies, you know, you have your Barb, Barbenheimer events, but when movies come out for the church, the church finds them and they go. And I find that so beautiful. And when I started in the business, you know, everybody talked about what was coming out on Friday, the three movies, and they went and saw them. And if they were bad, Saturday, they said, don't go. But now you have movies that come out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and streams and you, you, you go through certain apps and you see posters and you don't even know what the movie is until you hit that poster and it opens and it tells you an actor and you go, I think I know that actor. And you watch the movie and you go, ah, and then you move on. There, there, you know, the, 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 uh, the audience for film going is being attacked, but never been attacked in the faith-based community. And that's another reason why I think Hollywood is watching now and paying attention because these movies, they, they, you know, they keep going. They just keep going. Yeah. And we're seeing greater, I mean, you are a great example. We're seeing greater star power in some of these movies that historically maybe wouldn't have it even been on your radar. It's true. It's really true. Yeah. I remember being at the big agencies. My agents were like, yeah, yeah, no, no, you, we got that offer, but you know, they, are, they know how to keep the ones they want away. And now I sound like us against them. I don't really mean us against them mentality, but it's true. There were stigmas behind movies like this, but now any movie that works, that people come see, everybody supports them. So I think that that line is blurring and, and we're, we're in a changing time, a new direction, hopefully closer to God. Yeah, I love that. Well, Cuba, what is your hope for the firing squad? What is sort of the message that you want audiences to walk away with? You know, everybody's dealing with a page. Everybody's got their own page. And on that page, there's highs and lows. Never go too high and never go too low. Just stay steady and, and God's will be done. And don't give up. Don't give up the faith. No matter how dark it seems, never give up. 